Hey guys, so it's me Varun back. So uh, let us continue with the problem which we have been discussing for the past two sessions. Now you might think that why am I extending this lecture so much? So that's because I don't want everything to be one big lecture. So I wanted my videos to be under 10 minutes or maximum 12 or 13 minutes. So that's why I'm splitting these uh, lectures into smaller components. So today we are going to discuss the last part of the problem which we have been discussing for the separately excited DC generator. So the problem is same. So if you want to see the problem, you can go to the previous lectures. All right. So the question is, uh, what adjustment can be made to restore the terminal voltage to the value found in A? Now you saw that what uh, was the previous problem? You are loading the generator with 360 amperes all right so because of that you found out that there was the armature reaction effect and all those things due to which the terminal voltage actually reduces because the ea which is a function of the flux reduces due to the flux weakening effect now the question here is what adjustment can be made to restore the terminal voltage to the value found in a so you have to just suggest a method here all right so the problem number d you have to suggest the method so you know that vt is equal to EA minus IARA, all right? And this equation we are using at 1600 RPM. Though even though the magnetization curve was at 1800 RPM, we converted the values for 1600 RPM. Now, <clears throat> the only way to change VT is by adjusting EA because RA is a constant and IA is the load current that load demands. So this both are constant here. So if you want to increase the value of VT, because the VT value had reduced due to the armature reaction and all those things. The only way is to increase the value of EA. Now EA is a function of K phi into omega. Now, omega is constant at 1600 RPM and K is a machine's constant. So the only value is changing flux. So you have to increase the value of flux if you want to the increase the value of EA. Now, flux, sorry. Now flux is a function of IF. Right, so you have to increase the value of IF to increase flux. Now, IF, you know that it is what what is that? It is actually the value of voltage V field divided by RF. Right, so what you have to do to increase IF, you have to decrease the value of RF. So, with this adjustable resistor which was adjusted to 63 amperes, now you might have to bring it down to increase the value of IF, thereby, you increase the value of flux, and thereby, you increase the value of EA. All right, so that is the method. So that is what you have to do. You have to add, add, reduce the value of RF. So that is the solution to the problem number D. So now in problem number E, we are going to uh, specifically find how much of field current you require to be increased to increase the value of EA and uh, how much value of RF is corresponding to that. All right. So let us take the problem number E. So how much value of IF is required to restore the no load voltage? Okay, so the no load terminal voltage, which was found in the first lecture, part one is 382 volts. All right. So let us uh, see that. And what value of RF accomplishes this? So let us find out the value. So VT is equal to EA minus IARA again. Remember that this equation is this value 382 volts was found out at 1600 RPM. Initially, we found out uh, found it from uh, the magnetization curve, 1800 RPM. Then you convert it into 1600 RPM. So now we are going to go reverse a little bit. So now VT was 382 volts, right? So you want the VT to be 382 volts. The reduced value of VT in the previous session was uh, 364 volts, right? So it had reduced. So now you are want to increase it to 382 volts the no load voltage so so you want to increase it to 382 so correspondingly what will be the value of ea that is what we are going to find so ea minus the current is 360 amperes multiplied by 0 0.05 right so that means ea will be equal to ea will be have to be equal to 400 volt now because this is the 1600 rpm so ea will be 400 should be 400 volt at 1600 rpm okay now, next is finding the value of IF. So how can you find the value of IF? You have to go to the magnetization curve. You know the value of EA, right? So go to the magnetization curve, uh, which I have put here. Take this value, which you have found out and go to the magnetization curve. Now, the important thing here is that if you take this 400 volt 
and do the uh, find out the if corresponding to 400 volt and substitute and get the answer that will be a wrong answer and in exams like gate again that will be there in the option because the magnetization curve is drawn at 1800 rpm so what you have found out is at 1600 rpm so 400 volt is corresponding to 1600 rpm right so the voltage which is corresponding to ea0 1800 rpm you have to find it from the direct relation all right so let me just bring it here so ea0 by 400 is equal to 1800 by 1600 right direct relation 400 corresponding to 1600 what voltage corresponding to 1800 so ea0 will be equal to 400 multiplied by 1800 by 1600 so it will be an uh, the value is 450 volts so this is the value which you have to take to the magnetization curve all right so let us see what we get for 450 volts right so this is 450 volts okay so that is corresponding to this point so correspondingly the value of if is somewhere here and in the book the value is given to be if at 400 volt is given to be 6.15 ampere so let me just write it down here so the if which is corresponding to 450 volt all right this is at 1800 rpm which is you are using 1800 rpm because you are referring to the magnetization curve so this is 6.15 amperes hmm? so to get 6.15 amperes what should be the value of rf all right so rf is equal to vf divided by if right all right so you your field voltage is 430 volts right so the full field voltage here is 430 volts right so this is not changing it's separately excited machine and if required is 6.15 so the rf corresponding to that the total rf will be 70 ohms approximately it will be equal to 70 ohms so you know that the total rf the total rf rf total okay the rf total is equal to the rf which is part of the machine plus the R adjustable, which you had adjusted to 63 ohms, right? So this RF is 20 and uh, this R adjustable is the thing which you had to find out. And this is R total, which is 70 ohms, all right? So R adjustable is equal to 70 minus 20, which is equal to 50 ohms, all right? So what is the meaning of this? In order to make the voltage equal to the no load voltage, in order to make the terminal voltage, uh, this reduced terminal voltage here, which one was that? Yeah. In order to make, uh, one second, yeah. In order to make this reduced terminal voltage, 364 volt, to the no load voltage, which is 382 volt, 382 volt. So I'll just write it down there. So in order to make, in order to make the reduced terminal voltage which was 382 volt okay no not 382 volt it was 364 volt in order to make the reduced terminal voltage 364 volt to the no load terminal voltage which is equal to 382 volt the r adjustable should be equal to 50 ohms clearly you are decreasing the value of r adjustable right so initially it was 63 ohms so you reduce the value of r adjustable make it 50 ohms that means if will flow higher value of if will flow which is 6.15 the previous uh, problem the if was around 5 5.2 or something like that so it will increase to 6.15 flux will increase accordingly and finally your ea will increase due to which vt also will increase all right so i hope you have understood the problem so in the previous problems what we did was that you found found out the value of if and uh, from the magnetization curve which is drawn at 1800 rpm you found out the value of ea because our problem demanded 1600 rpm so you converted that ea to from 1800 to 1600 rpm here what did you do you found out initially the value at 1600 rpm using this particular relation then in order to go to the magnetization curve you converted the value to 1800 rpm and from there you found out the value of if and then finding the value of 
RF is just using Ohm's law. So I hope you have understood this particular session. I know things can be a little bit confusing, but don't worry if you go through these lectures one or two times, it will be very much clear. In case you still don't understand, I will be very happy to answer you. Just put your down uh, answer, sorry, <laughs> just put your doubts in the comments section below. So if you like this video, please like, share and subscribe the channel and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.